and welcome back. Part two of the Science, Wildlife and Wild Places category at the AIPP Professional Photography Awards. Thank you so much for joining us, everyone. Judges on our panel at the moment, we have Mandarin Montgomery, David Evans, Gary Cranich has joined us, Hilary Hahn and Ollie Dale. Thank you so much. I also have Terry Hahn assisting me. He's been doing a fabulous job. So thank you so much, Terry. Let us begin with the next print, please. A hawksbill hatchling floats in the shallow water of the Kaviang region of Papua New Guinea. This print scores 82, silver award. <laughs> Gary, right into the hot seat, give us a comment about this one. Yeah, terrific picture. Um, huge amount of symmetry, it's very simple. Uh, strong piece of communication, silver award. Thank you. Next print, please. There is no caption for this image. This print scores 81, silver award. <laughs> Ollie, could you give us a comment, please? You're on the average. Sure, it's a great little collection of six images that tells a really good story. That, but the reason it's in the award category is because it's so technically well done that it presents much more than just the story of how elephants are made. Um, it, it gives us that intriguing light and, and depth that the time of day gives. So well done. Thanks very much, judges, and very consistent scoring there. Next print, please. An Antarctic tern hovers briefly against a cloudy sky before diving into the sea to catch a krill, catch krill at Foyne Harbour, Antarctica. This print scores 86, a silver with distinction. Uh, David, could you give us a comment, please? <coughs> um, I really like the space that's been left below the bird because it's looking that way and it just leaves a, a nice direction for the story to go in. And um, I like the fact that some of the feathers are mm. a bit soft and that, that we've got a point of focus and contrast where the head of the and the beak are. It's really been really well done, very deserving of a silver distinction. Thanks, David. Next print, please. 
A young humpback whale dances in crystal clear waters. This print scores 78. Uh, Mandarin, could you give us a comment about this print, please? Um, yeah, I scored that in um, good professional standard. Um, the reason why I didn't go a little higher was I, I almost would have loved to have seen the other images um, during this uh, shoot. I feel that um, the positioning of the whale's fins are just a little awkward, so I would have loved to have seen a little bit more story with that. And also the reflection on the surface of the water is, is a little distracting. Perhaps if it was cropped slightly differently, it would have um, scored higher. Thank you. A couple of things for the photographer to maybe play with. Next print, please. The incoming current carries plankton, which lures the planktivores out to feed at the reef's leading edge. The faster a fish can retreat from predators, the further out it will swim from the reef's protection. The orange antheas feed close, while the faster swimming fusilias dare to feed further out. This print scores 79. And we'll go for review. David Evans, talk to us about this print. What might bring it up into the next award <coughs> range? Um, there's a lot going on, and I don't necessarily know where to look initially. Um, the point of focus, I suppose, is that big lump of coral, but th the fish are more interesting, so um, I would probably like to see a bit more focus in terms of the subject. Thanks, David. Next print, please. Large wild male polar bear climbs a snowdrift, dragging his ice-covered back paw in the last light of winter as he searches for a nearby female. Photographed from snowmobile on the east coast of Svalbard. This print scores 86, a silver with distinction. <laughs> Gary, you were next to the average. Yeah, very, very interesting picture. It's not the sort of thing you often see. The and the caption describes it perfectly to the dragging of the foot. I was just drawn to the contrast between the chunkiness and the detail on the foot and then this little bit of facial expression. Lovely subtle tones as well. So well done, photographer. Thanks, Gary. Next print, please. Ulva lactuca, also known by the common name sea lettuce, is an edible green alga photographed with a fisheye lens in the Derwent Estuary, Tasmania.
This print scores 81, the silver award. <laughs> David, could we have a comment from you, please? Um, uh, look, this is a really interesting photo of algae, and I think that that's a really probably a very difficult thing to do. I think the overall effect using the fisheye lens really create um, a strong impact um, with, with the image, and I think it deserves a, a, a good silver. Thanks very much. Next print, please. The Vela supernova remnant is an expanding debris cloud from the death explosion of a massive star 11,000 years ago. Shock front filaments of glowing oxygen and hydrogen gas glow in contrasting colours as the material disperses across the Milky Way galaxy. 20 hours exposure through three separate narrowband filters. This print scores 87, a silver with distinction. But we have a challenge from Ollie, who's on 92. Now, Ollie, there's two 87s, an 85 and an 83 for you. Okay. So the thing I got from this image is that there's a big, expansive sky to point at. So what the author has brought to this image is the precise location, crop, presentation, storytelling, the colour palette that's in that. There's, like, what colour isn't there? It's incredible. And... I get a real sense of depth to an image of a thing that is so far away it might as well be flat. And so the process that this author has used has brought out, for me, I look into that and I can see the bits that are closer and the bits that are further away. I can see this sort of pink bubble that goes through all of it with this lightning crackle of whatever's left. It's, it's outstanding. It takes you on a journey through the image itself, and when you get there, you feel like you're actually in space. And so I thought that was a gold for me. Gary, you had it as a silver in 83. Yes, look, I, c I understand the journey story that, that you're running. Um, I followed the lines, but I kind of got a little bit lost on the line of the story. Of following that very strong dominant diagonal line, I've still given it an 83. It's a silver award, certainly we've all agreed. I'm, I'm still away from a gold. Purely because of that directional kind of path that leads me away. So um, if you can get me back into the middle of the picture, let me know. Hillary had it as a silver distinction from 87. I think I underscored this. I, I, um, a bit like Ollie, uh, it's it's um, it's got a beautiful, surreal look to it, and the blue in it is what made it for me. It felt like um, there was a sense of electricity out there that you don't even think about because, uh, who knows what's out there? But that striking blue and the way it's it's moving through the image just it's electrifying, and I think um, it, I don't even really need a, a specific thing to look at because it's um, because of the way of the design of it and, and the very strong colours. Um, yeah, that's I'll be I'll be moving up. And Ollie, you're right of reply. I don't think we need to move it too far to get it up to a ninety. Um, I, I agree. To me I'm drawn to the orange. Um, and the blue is kind of like this um, electricity that goes through it and and is kind of like a balance to it but I'm drawn more to the orange than the blue and and I just find that as a piece it works so well we s you can look at lots of astro stuff this one stands out to me as one of the best of of what you can point at and how you can present it so to me that's a gold so our average score is 87 Ollie holds a 92 everyone else can rescore Print scores a 90 a gold. <laughs> Next print, please. Uh, 
Lionfish are native to the Indo-Pacific region. They live solitary lives and prey on a wide variety of fish, including other lionfish. This one is surrounded by an abundance of anchovies. They are highly venomous and have no known predators. Triton Bay, Indonesia. This print scores 81, silver award. <coughs> Hilary, could you give us a comment about this, please? You're on the average. Thank you. Yes, I thought this was a lovely portrait of this uh, lionfish, and I love the way the, the, the fish and the, the background curves. Um, nice graphic to it. Well done. Thank you very much. We're going to have a judge change. Thank you, Mandarin. You've been there quite some time now. And we'll bring on Andrew Campbell. Grandmaster Andrew Campbell. <laughs> we'll have the next print, please. This territorial Australian honey eater has a distinctive white eye, easily identifying the species as a New Holland honey eater. This print scores 87, silver with distinction. But we have a challenge from Andrew Campbell, who is on 93. Andrew, there's an 88, 87, 84, and an 82. Go right ahead. Thank you so much. This, uh, in my opinion, is an absolutely beautiful and exquisitely done piece. Um, I really, really enjoy the, the graphic nature of what we're seeing here. It's almost like an illustration. It has that vaguely like a Victorian that someone like Darwin would have, you know, illustrated on the Beagle or whichever ship he was on. Um, but it, it stands up beautifully now. It's just a piece of art. So I appreciate that some of you learned people can educate me about some of the, uh, the science behind it. But on the art side, man, it's got to be gold for me. Gary, you're on 82. Yes, look, it, it's certainly a silver award we're all agreed on that and I hear what Andrew's saying about those references to um, uh, illustration. He was probably thinking about Gould as the bird illustrator um, who, who is the famous one. But yeah, it's got a wonderful graphic nature to it. I've, I've probably been a bit tough at 82. I'm still listening to some other, other judges, what they have to say. I, I also reference that lithograph look and feel to it as well. It's very simple, three colours, so yep, let's hear some other judges too. And David, you weren't far away from gold. You were in solid silver distinction at 88. Yeah, um, I was a bit shy. I'll be coming up. Um, I, what I really like about, apart from the superb print quality, is the de deliberate decision to leave some of those twigs in the bottom because it just adds so much really nice context. But also a lot of the triangles that are going on, the angles between the bird and the twig and the, that tail sticking out at that, that exact pr precise angle, there's a lot of ways you can kind of dissect it to make it really pleasing. And I think it's those, those triangles and the angles I really like. Thank you. Um, Andrew, you're right of reply. <coughs> I think we need to just sum up that uh, you've got composition, you've got graphics, you've got all the right references happening here to bring this into the gold range. And I encourage you to do so. So our average score is 87. Andrew is locked at 93, but everyone else can rescore. And a gold award at 90. <laughs> Next print, please. 
a stranded blue blubber jellyfish on a Queensland beach. With the ongoing decline in turtle numbers, the jellyfish population increases due to the absence of its predator. Thousands of jellyfish lay testament to this as they litter the beaches, much to awe of tourists and the amusement of locals. And this print scores at 76. Uh, David, could you give us a comment, please, about this one? Yeah, it's a nice, competent um, record of this jellyfish. Um, I think it's a slight opportunity missed and that there's there could be some drama, um, perhaps some technique that could have been used to um, increase the impact of the image, like a you know, wider lens or closer up or backlighting or something like that. So sure. Thank you, David. Next print, please. Underwater macrophotograph of a one-inch ghost goby. This tiny fish sits atop and defends her small clutch of eggs. She laid the eggs among the siphons of a tunicate. A tunicate's skin is toxic, which deters any passing predators. This print scores 86, a silver with distinction. But we do have a challenge from Hillary. Thanks, Hillary. You're on 90. Uh, there are there's an 87, two 86s and an 82. Whoops, sorry. <laughs> I, when this turned around, I thought, oh, this is just beautiful, the tonal range and the, the, um, the graphic nature of the little round, I guess they're part of that skin. Um, and the way the eggs are around the, the front of the fish and just the the texture of it and there was nothing that disappointed when I went up there. I just thought the photographer has just brought so much insight to what the, the or how the fish reproduces and looks after its eggs and they've technically made just a beautiful image and I, um, I really think it's worth a gold. Thanks, Hilary. Andrew from 82. Yeah, I'm listening, Hilary. Um <coughs> I'm impressed by the fact that this thing is an inch long and it's a beautifully sharp and uh, well-captured piece. I'm also a little bit mindful that the subject is a little bit overshadowed by the graphic nature of the environment and it seems a little bit kind of lost to me. Um, and the print itself seems sort of heavy, but I'm listening. I'm listening. Ollie, you were on the average at 86. Um, yeah, I, I was chicken and I'm going to come up. And the reason I wanted to say something is against what you just said. The whole point is that the fish is lost. You, you predators will see it if it stands out. And so the author has brought to this a scientific reproduction of where it is, but an artistic reproduction which has really bold graphical impact. And the more you look at it, the more intrigue you get out of it. So I'm coming up to gold. Hilary, you're right of reply. I think Ollie covered that pretty well, actually. Um, but yes, I, I agree with everything he said, and I um, I just find it quite an intriguing image, and it's got so much to look at, but it has a centre of interest. And um, yeah, definitely a gold, please. So our average score is 86. Hilary hel holds a 90. Everyone else free score. By majority, print scores 90, gold award. Next print, please. Two humpback whales sleep on the seabed during the winter breeding season in the waters of the Kingdom of Tonga. And I'll just mention to anyone who is uh, listening on the live stream, hello. And um, if you happen to be in Melbourne, you should pop down and see us because you actually get to see all the prints that are awarded hung on the walls outside.
rereading the title for this one. Two humpback whales sleep on the seabed during the winter breeding season in the waters of the Kingdom of Tonga. By majority, this print scores 84, silver award. But we have a challenge from Ollie, who's on 93. Uh, there's an 86, 84, and two 82s, Ollie. Yeah, I encourage you to, to come up. What did it score overall? 84. It okay, was an 85 so average, 84 majority. It's on the cusp of silver distinction. I gave it 93. This, I mean, it's a beautiful print. It's a beautiful story. But for me, the thing that takes it above that is the story that you get from the lion left in the sand by this whale who's asleep being dragged through the sand overnight as it as it snores off a few of its prey that it's been eating and it's it's a story and yet the the l baby looks like it's almost playing um and so i g i just get a lot more to this than just the silver this this kind of is a great example of capturing these creatures in their environment and telling more of a story than just what you see there there is more to it there's the connection between the animals, there's what's going on with the sleeping patterns. And I just really enjoy it, and, and I gave it a 93, so I encourage you to, to come up. Gary, you're on 82. Yeah, the sleeping story is very strong. Um, I would have scored higher than 82, but I'm, I'm reading the vignette really strongly. Um, it doesn't need those big dark tones in the two bottom corners. In actual fact, it would be great to have it look like a bed sheet because the sleeping story is there, it's fantastic, and a lovely continuous tone. But look, I'm still listening to, to where we're at. 82 is still a good score, but I've got a way to go to get to 93 with you. Hilary, you're in silver distinction at 86. Thanks. Um, I don't think the vignette's enough to, to pull it down so far, in my personal opinion. I mean, I, I love the story. I just love the tonal range and the texture. I mean, oh my goodness, it's just to die for. Um, and it has a beautiful story, and there is detail in that dark bottom whale. It's just sort of slightly speckled, and um, I'll come up. It's just beautiful. Ollie, you're right of reply, and I will make note of um, the fact that Ollie has pressed the known button. Yeah, it's a kind of a maybe known. I'm not sure, but to me, the vignette, it's it to assume it's a vignette is one thing. I can then assume that what we're looking at is the top of a hill of sand, and the whale's about to be dragged by the tide off, off the edge and have a very rude awakening. Um, it, to me, it adds depth. It adds depth to what could be a very flat bottom of the ocean. And it doesn't offend me at all. It, it gives me texture and, and a place and, and a, and a three-dimensional feel. So, yeah, I'm, I'm encouraging you to come up to the, to the golds. I think this is definitely worthy of, of being hung out there on the gold wall. So we had an average score of 85, but a majority 84. Ollie is locked in at 93. Everyone else can rescore. Print scores 89, a silver with distinction, and we'll go for review. Next print, please. Documented in the floodplains of Bamaroo Northern Territory, Australia. The magpie goose gosling was snatched in an air-to-water attack by the apex predator in these wetlands, the whistling kite. The kite then used the fence post to beat and strip his meal in preparation for sustenance. This print scores 79. It will go for review at the end of this category, and I might just explain to the audience that just means that anything that's on the cusp of the next award range, um, at the end of this category, we look at it again and decide whether it goes up to the next award range or remains where it is. Uh, could we get a comment about this, please, from David? <coughs> uh, yeah, look, it's a 
very competent image. I really like the story that it's um, showing and it's very interesting. Um, I think maybe to improve it, I would like to see a bit more of the tighter in on the action. Um, I think there's a little bit too much um, surrounding that's not really um, adding to the story. Thanks very much, David. Next print, please. A green sea turtle swimming through a shallow lagoon under choppy seas at sunset. This print scores 85, so with distinction. But we have a challenge from Ollie, who's on 90, yes, 92. Now, we've got a span of scores here that range uh, from 88, 87, 81, and a 76. Go for it, Ollie. Okay, so the visual impact that I got from this one was really strong. The, the, the colour, top and bottom being so opposite, being cut through the middle by this... this glorious kind of mess that goes through it um, that just gives me a sense of place and, and the serenity underneath is, is so different to what we're faced with that cutting right through the image that the colour palette, the story I mean th I could see this on my wall this is a beautiful uh, sort of capture of this place that tells a certain time and just it just takes me there and, and I'm captivated by it and I have to reward it in the gold award for outstanding visual communication because that's to me is exactly what it is. Next to you is Hillary on 76. I just found the sunset, the light from that, just so overpowering. I, I probably couldn't get past it, but I'm listening to what everyone else is saying. Well, let's hear from Andrew. You're on 88. Still the distinction. Yeah, I'm probably more up there with uh, with Ollie on this one. The um <coughs> It's almost like there's someone peeling back a layer um, at the top and we're, we've got this beautiful stillness uh, below. And the contrast between the, the stillness of the turtle and the craziness of the wave and the light quality of sunset versus twilight underneath, it's, it's you know, I'm, I'm with Ollie on this, it's beautiful. I'll, I'll need a little bit more convincing to go that extra two points though. Ollie's going to have a go at that and write a reply. So the thing that, that takes it to gold for me is the control that the author has brought to the lighting under the surface. Yes, you start with that bright patch, your eye goes straight to there, but it's a sunset. Of course it's going to be bright. Then there's parts of the image that are almost as bright that I'm rewarded through as a journey as I go through. And then I get underneath. It's almost like a completely different image with the light coming from a different direction, so serene, so sharp. It really is a picture of two halves, and, uh, and I'm totally enjoying that and well-deserving of my 92. So our average score is 85. Ollie has, has a 92. Everyone else can rescore. Print scores 88 are solid, so with distinction. Next print, please. Philadiorhynchus pusillus, squat lobster. print scores 76. Hilary, can we have a comment from you about this one, please? I would have loved to have seen a little bit more um, in the background that tell me where it actually lives, what, whether it, is it floating in the sea or is it... Um, 
and it's a it's a nice little portrait of the um of the animal but as a creature but just a little bit more information would have been been good thank you we're going to do a judge change thank you david we'll bring on joshua holko and have the next print please Giraffe on the Masai Mara, Kenya, 2017. This print scores 84 silver award. But we have a challenge from Andrew Campbell, who scored at gold in 90. So there's an 88, 83, 81, and an 80 for you, Andrew. There's some work to do. The, um, I think the thing I really enjoy about this image is the comedic factor of it. It's, it's so graphically powerful. And then you get up and closely, uh, you see every little whisker and eyelash on the uh, on the giraffe and it's it's kind of like it's almost she's preening herself in front of a mirror it's really quite beautifully done some of you are going to have issues with uh with vignetting i'm sure and i'm, I'm going to hear that but uh i'm prepared to overlook that and give this one a good score because i think it's a dramatic powerful piece hillary you were on 80. yes i, I hear what you're saying andrew i just find it perhaps the processing is a little bit overdone um and if i was uh, looking at it and, and the uh, photographer was going down that track of really accentuating all that detail maybe black and white would have suited a bit more but i just find it it's just it's just it feels over processed really um but i like the comedic factor in it and, and i'm happy with it in silver okay just deciding which judge i'm going to go judge i'm going to go to next i'm going to go to josh because you were right next to the average on 83. um I agree with everything Andrew said about this print. I love the comedic factor, and I'm going to take you to task, Hillary, on the on the processing. I actually think it adds to the image. I, f I find that cartoony quite look of processing really helps me. I was solidly in the silver range. I I didn't go silver distinction because I didn't like the vignette. I felt the vignette took away from the from the image. But I hear what Andrew's got to say, and the more I look at it, the more I it uh, the more I feel like I can go up on this one because the comedy value is there, and that's that's excellent in visual communication. Andrew, you're about to reply. <coughs> Thanks, folks. Um, I think this would make a fantastic poster to illustrate Werribee Zoo or somewhere like that. It's just, or an exhibition of beautiful, quirky animals. It's kind of, what's it, what, what were those kids' movies with the animals? Zootopia, that kind of stuff. It's got all that sort of stuff going on in it. It's impact, it's dramatic, it's got punch. What do you want? Come on, give it a nice score. <laughs> So our average score was an 84, and Andrew has a sil uh, gold at 90. Everyone else please score, please. Print has gained some points and gone into silver distinction, 87. <coughs> Next print, please. The coastal wolf of British Columbia lies in a genetic dis distinct category. They adapted to the seaside life relying mostly on what the ocean provides, including salmon. They are, however, still legally persecuted and their often lonely presence reminds us of their integral role in the Great Bear Rainforest. This print scores 81, a silver award. <coughs> Hilary, can you talk to us about this print, please? Yes, this is um, a very nice image of the environment that this animal lives in. Um, I would have loved to s the, the animal itself is just a lost a little bit, but it's a beautiful print. Thank you. 
Next print, please. The moment a leopard seal manages to strip the skin from its Adelie penguin prey, both subjects were unhandled. This print scores 77. And may I have a comment, Gary? Look, I can't help but think that um, this was a moment that just didn't get there. I was looking for that story that wasn't there. Uh, and uh, I couldn't read the caption at all. I couldn't read any of the animals. So it's still a really competent capture. But the story of the stripping and that predation isn't there. So, yeah. Great. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, Adam, for stepping in on that one. And we'll have the next print, please. The La di Ayuni Salt Flats, Bolivian Altiplano. By majority, this print scores 80 silver award. Ollie, could you give us a comment, please? Yeah, it's a powerful piece of communication in a, in a certain place that gives a certain effect. I really enjoy the clouds, and I think any clouds would work because of how amazing that, that salt flat is. So well done with the silver. Thank you very much. Next print, please. Afternoon light skims the hard corals of the southern Great Barrier Reef. The caption again is afternoon light skims the hard corals of the southern Great Barrier Reef. This print scores 78. Ollie, could we hear from you about this one, please? Yeah, I, th I think it's a, a great um, example of professional standard in a category where it, it provides everything you'd expect from a professional photographer. It tells a story. It's 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 nicely cropped. It doesn't get into that award character through through category through either post processing or even capture in camera that gives us a bit more punch or a bit more color or something. It's well done. Seventy eight. Thanks, Ollie, and thank you, David, for stepping in there. Next print, please. Very heavy rain associated with thunderstorm activity soak the paddocks of the Midwest with much needed moisture, while the storm clouds soak in the magnificent colours of sunset. This print scores 78. Uh, Josh, could you give us a comment about it, please? 
it's a pretty incredible weather system uh, to see uh, you know, reproduced like this. I felt it was a little bit of a missed opportunity. And just for the benefit of the photographer, I, I think if more thought had been given to the composition, it would have scored much stronger. Cool. Thank you very much. Going to do another judge change. Thank you, Gary. Have a quick break. And Adam Finch, welcome back. We'll have the next print, please. Female green turtles wait in the ocean for nightfall before heading ashore to lay their eggs. This print scores 77. Uh, Hillary, could we get a comment from you, please? There's three of you on 77. This is a, a, a lovely photograph, um, but I don't think it has enough in there to bring us up into that award, but it's a nice, proficient photograph. Thanks, Hillary. Next print, please. Paradise Harbour, Antarctica. This print scores 81, a silver. Comment, please, from Ollie. Yeah, it's, a, it's beautifully presented to us. The printing's lovely. I think it's, a, it's an amazing place that has been captured really well to a, to a level of, of silver. Had there been some more storytelling elements in there, it might have gone a lot higher. Thanks, Ollie. Next print, please. Underwater macro photograph of a tiny predatory fish, the blue striped flang blenny. His striking colours and comical appearance are at odds with his sharp teeth and flesh-eating habit. He hides safely in a discarded wormhole, waiting to ambush and bite a chunk out of any passing prey. This print scores 79, and we'll go for review at the end of the category. Josh, could you give us a word about this one, please? I like the, uh, the framing, the way the fish has been framed in the photograph. I feel that the colour palette uh, didn't quite carry it up for me. It's very professionally uh, photographed, and, and it's been very well handled. I think it sits comfortably as a professional underwater photograph. Thank you. Next print, please. A red-tailed tropic bird hovering in strong up updrafts along its clifftop home on Lord Howe Island, allowing me to capture the beautiful detail of its plume against the distant ocean below.
this print scores 83, silver award. Ollie, can you give us a word about this one? Yeah, I, what I enjoyed with this one is how it kind of goes into the realm of, of not really knowing what you're looking at and being presented with something that challenges you as a viewer. And that's why I thought it was a, a good little silver. So well done. Thanks, Ollie. And time for another judge change, uh, keeping you guys on your toes. Thank you, Josh. And I'll bring back Cam Attry. And we will have the next print, please. The Australian giant cuttlefish aggregation is one of nature's great events. Cuttlefish congregate in the shallow waters around Spencer Gulf in South Australia to mate and perpetuate the species. Sorry, perpetuate the species. This print scores 82, silver award. Hilary, have a chat with us about this print. Yes, I thought it was a, a nice photograph. I just found um, that maybe it was a little bit dull. I would have liked just a little bit more life in it, but it was a, a still a lovely print, well worth a silver. Thanks, Hilary. Next print, please. A wild white morph arctic fox heads headlong into a freezing winter blizzard as it patrols the edge of its territory in the Hornstandia na Nature Reserve in the remote northwest of Iceland. Photograph from Snowblind. This print scores 88, a silver with distinction. And all the judges in that scoring range. Uh, comment, please, Adam Finch. Uh, beautifully executed, um, the sharpness in the, in the fox and the, the wonderful kind of atmospheric nature of the snow sort of um, giving a, a great sense of mood to the image. It's really well done to the author. Thanks, Adam. Next print, please. A female yellow-tailed black cockatoo roosts and preens at first light, running her beak along her worn yellow tail feathers with light emphasising the detail. This print scores 83, silver award. Cam, could you give us a word about this one? Yeah, really nice capture by the photographer. Um, interesting little story with the preening as well. It's something that you don't see that often in an image like this. And I uh, really like the sort of graphic nature and the, well, it was the nature of the image as well. Thanks, Cam. Next print, please. Dulcicidae, jumping spider, peacock spider.
This print scores 75. Andrew, you're right on the average there. Thanks, Melinda. I think it's a technically um, prof professional capture, but it seems to be lacking the drama and the impact that we'd be looking for to get it up into the silver range. Perhaps a lower camera angle to give it a more sense of uh, dramatic scale would help with this one. Um, but I think the author's uh, done a pretty good job. Thanks, Andrew. Next print, please. Five-month-long single exposure documenting the transition of the sun and corresponding local cloud cover during exposure. Shot using a homemade camera using a modified alternative process within the Adelaide CBD. This print scores 87, a silver with distinction. But Hillary is challenging. She's in 90. Uh, okay, we got uh, 88, 87, 85 and 83. Go for it, Hillary. The thing I really, really was attracted to in this image was that it's being shot in a city and so it's got modern buildings, it's got old buildings, but the old buildings just, um, the new buildings, the modern buildings look old. The whole feeling of the foreground um, feels really old um, and it really matches the, the tone of the whole image um, beyond even the, the sun moving across. It was the, the, um, the weight of the, the composition that's turned a modern vibrant city into really a derelict, um, w not a wasteland, but you're obviously not going to see any life in it because of how long it takes to... to make the photograph, but choosing a city environment has really added another level to this image, in, in my opinion. Cameron had it as a solid silver in 83. I did, and I, I guess I was sort of looking for that extra story in it, which Hillary's kind of just alluded to a little bit more there. <laughs> um, Hold the mic closer. And, yeah, so the, the, the story with the older buildings and the newer buildings all sort of coming together and with this al alternative process it kind of uh, works so I'm listening a bit more so I might come up. Ollie you were in the middle of Silver Distinction at 88. Yeah I mean I I got that old world feel from it and it, it kind of matches the, the technique really. It's taking me to a place I might have been fence sitting on an 88 maybe it is a gold. Um, is there a right of reply on this one? Yes there is. Yeah I'm, I'm loving it talk me up <laughs> and Hillary's going to attempt to do that with her right of reply these uh, this technique um, which I've seen over a couple of years um, obviously has these beautiful lines of the Sun moving across and that's a given it what makes it interesting or brings it up a level for me um, is what has been put in the foreground and there's a conscious effort to have something um, that can tell a story. I mean, you can read anything into it. You could read what will happen to Adelaide in a um, hundred years because we struggle with electricity and we struggle with this and we'll all move to Melbourne or something or another. I mean, there's so many stories you could, I with a bit of imagination, put into a photograph like this that is of a modern um, city with a million people in it. And I just find that... Um, using a city as the basis for this technique has allowed it to breathe in a different way that doesn't rely on um, people in it or doing the normal things we do in a city. It's really reliant on the buildings and the architecture and um, yeah, that's I, I think it's worthy of a gold. Our average is 87, Hillary holds a 90 but everyone else can rescore.
Prince scores 89 and we'll go for review at the end. Next print, please. Spring in coastal British Columbia is a wet and active time for the grizzly bears, Ursus arctos, that come here every year. The female is determined to find a partner for mating and with purpose she swims across the inlet to a potential mating partner. This print scores 77. Cameron's going to challenge. She's on 82. Let's see. We've got 77, 76, 75 and a 73. Yeah, I just really wanted to reward the, the photographer for providing an, an image of a, you know, a bear in this situation, which is very unusual. Um, we normally see the, the bears, you know, feeding, catching salmon, that sort of thing. But this is a really different look at uh, uh, the bear's life, how they travel around in this environment. Um, I love that it's it's almost takes on like a little submarine type of situation, s just stri streaming through the water there with just the, the top of the back and the top of the head showing through. So that's what sort of attracted me to the image. Um, and of course, the print is really, really nice as well. So that helps. I think it's well worthy of, of a unanimous story award. Andrew, you're on 73. Uh, yes, I find this one lacking a bit in drama and in, sorry mate, print quality. Uh, it's, it's very muted tones, it's very um, flat colour palette and contrast. I think haven't really added to the, to the story of the bear swimming. So well done on getting the moment where the bear is swimming but I don't think the presentation is helping the image uh, in this case. Thanks, Andrew. Hilary, you were on the average at 77. Yes, I'm, I'm afraid I agree with Andrew. Um, and bears do do a lot of swimming, and so it's good to be there, capture it, but it needs to bring a little bit more to us, um, a little bit more of a story, different camera angle, a bit more technique, um, just something more to get into that award level. Thanks, Hilary. A right of reply, Cameron. Yeah, I think the muted tones of the print so just basically replicate the situation of the environment in, in that, sort of, um, that particular time. It's that sort of drizzly rain. It, that's the sort of tone that you're going to expect. Um, yes, there's some the, the little issues there, but I think um, overall the photographer did a good job in capturing this, this unique moment. So our average score is 77. Cameron is locked in at 82, but everyone else can rescore. This print scores 78, has gained a point. Next print, please. Two centimetre transparent shimps, shrimp scurrying over ocean debris during a winter muck drive in Battery Point, Tasmania. This print scores 80, silver award. Adam, could you have a word with us about this one, please? Yeah, I, I really enjoy the uh, the way the author has captured the subject itself. If, if to improve, I'd just maybe look at um, some of the distracting elements, sort of especially from, from a, a distance, some of those 
background elements were quite bright, um, whether they could be kind of handled a little bit differently to, to bring this subject forward. Thanks, Adam. Time for another judge change. Thank you, Andrew. And I'm going to bring back Gary Cranich. We'll have the next print, please. Located in another galaxy 160,000 light years distant, the Tarantula Nebula's glowing filaments of dust resemble the legs of a spider. The largest nebula known, it contains over 800,000 stars whose energy creates huge voids and filaments in the surrounding clouds of gas. 24 hours exposure using three separate narrowband filters. This print scores 86 at Silver with Distinction. Ollie, would you have a chat with us about it, please? <coughs> oh, I'm really glad that it got the score that I gave it because it means that I'm right again. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I, I think it's a beautiful shot and th th it you look at that and it gives you a sense of how small we are and I think that's the point of this style of photography. It's a, b a beautiful capture of an amazing place and I want to learn more about it because of that shot, so well done. Thanks, Ollie. Uh, we'll have the next print, please. In subarctic waters, a dying Dinea jellyfish floats on the surface between the ice flows. This print scores 87, a silver with distinction. Perhaps we have a challenge from Adam Finch on 91. You've got three 88s not far behind you and an 81, Adam. So we all, we all enjoy the image and I certainly do um, enjoy the image. Where uh, the sort of dying creature and that sort of the crystallization of the ice around the entity is, is really what I what I really enjoyed here we've got beautiful detail the, the color palette or the you know through the animal or the creature is really quite remarkable I, I, I almost thought it was going to be an astro um, photograph initially and then and and then to sort of realize we're, we're looking at something altogether different this is sort of transports me at a lot of different places I, I think the print quality is beautiful and that sort of the fringing around uh, outside the ice of sort of I guess the tentacles or whatever it might be kind of disappearing into the inky blackness really sort of set it out um, away from the mat so I, I'm in gold at 91 and I'd like to see some people join me there. Now Hillary you're at 81. I think I might have underscored it um, you have these moments and thank you for for all that because yeah I, I just miss the story in it I think I'll definitely come up. And Gary, you were on the average, 88, or near the average. Yeah, look, I'm not at all surprised that uh, that Adam has gone for this one as well. I was waiting for the caption as well to see whether it was an astro picture, trying to read what it was. It's an underwater picture. It's got these four or five different stories going on all amongst it. I'm coming up from 88 with you, Adam. Adam, you're right of reply. Join me at gold. I'm at 91 at least. Uh, give it what it deserves. Thank you.
Uh, average currently sits at 87. Adam has a 91. Everyone else, enter your scores. Gold at 91. Nice work, judges. Next print, please. King Penguins During a Snowstorm, St Andrews Bay, South Georgia. This print scores 83, silver award. <coughs> Gary, could you comment for us on this one? Yeah, look, if ever you want to capture the eff essence of a snowstorm amongst this mass aggregation of animals, here it is. I, I probably went looking for more of a point of focus and I would have scored higher. Um, and I was looking for that. But at 83, a silver award, I don't know, everyone was in the 80s, I think. So, yeah, yep. well done. Yes, all the judges in the silver range. Thank you very much. Next print, please. A rainbow appears out of apocalyptic skies while the storm clouds pick up pace and track away towards the horizon. This print scores 81, the silver award. May we please have a comment from Adam Finch, right next to the average on 82. Yeah, this is a really uh, a great example of how a, a, a well thought out colour palette and um, attention to detail can really relay drama quite well. You know, it, it'd be very easy for the to overdo the sky or overdo elements but it's just the right balance i think very comfortable at silver thank you very much next print please <coughs> australian fur seal arctocephalus pusillus dorepheus i apologize if that's wrong the world's fourth rarest seal species playfully showing off at Murno Bright, Tasman Peninsula, Tasmania. This print scores 79. And we'll go for review at the end of the category. Hilary, can you have a chat with us about this one, please? I thought this was a very nice professional capture. Um, it's doing exactly what they said in the caption. It's, um, yeah, I don't think there's much to add to that, but it's a just a, a lovely photograph. Pro definitely a pro very professional. Thanks, Hilary. Next print, please. South African Elephant, Kruger National Park.
this print scores 72. Gary, could you have a word with us about this one, please? Yeah, look, I've, I've scored at 72. I, I went looking for just something more to, to get this up into the, the award range. It's, um, y yeah, it's a competent capture, but I haven't got anything more in the story of this animal and what it's doing within the landscape. So, yeah, that's all. Thanks, Gary. Next print, please. Lichenostomus. Melanops Cassidix, Helmeted Honey Eater. This print scores 77. Gary, again, if I may, right on the average again. Yeah, look, I th it's, a, it's a competent capture, um, good professional standard. I think I in terms of going any further than that, um, the tonal range uh, is, is competing with the subject matter. So that bottom bright area is the brightest part of the image. So, yeah, just watch your camera angles, that's all. Yep. Thanks, Gary. Next print, please. A humpback whale on its northern migration heads up for a breath while being escorted by two common dolphins. The air exhaled are bubbles that haven't broken the surface of the water yet. This print scores 77. Adam, can we hear from you, please? I actually sort of wanted to see a little bit more space around the image. I found the crop to be quite tight um, and, and opposed to watching the details and the highlights in particular around the dolphins, trying to get a little bit more detail in there would be great. Thanks, Adam. Going to do a judge change. Thank you, Ollie. You've been in there quite some time. And I'll bring in Mandarin Montgomery. And we will have the next print, please. There is no caption for this image. This print scores 79, but Gary's going to challenge it from 88. Uh, now, Cam was in the silver range at 81, and then you had two 76s and a 75. Okay. This is such a simple picture. There's three things in it. There's some white, some trees, and this bird. So in terms of context, habitat, and how this species interacts with its habitat, it's a really nice example. It's so subtle. Three things going on in the picture. Um, and there's this honey eater in there amongst its stripped bare habitat. Really very, very simple piece of communication, but it's very strong. The space is fantastic, the positive and negative space. So have another look at the simplicity, I think, and just have a rethink. Thank you. Mandarin, you are on 75. Yeah, um, look, it's a, it's a pleasant image to look at. I'm, I'm enjoying it. The reason why I didn't go higher was um, 
uh, my eye was struggling to um, rest on something. I know, I know that the bird is the focus, but I found compositionally it seemed a little either heavy at the bottom w with... Uh, I, I would have liked it um, cropped more creatively. Um, the, the branch on the left is distracting. The, the um, detail in the bird is, uh, to me, lacking a little. Um, and I understand that it, it, it looks like a foggy day, but I'd still like to see a little bit more uh, detail in the, the end of the twigs. But I'm listening. Cameron, you had it as a silver on 81. Yeah, and the, the reason why is, is taking points from both Gary and Mandarin. I really like that simple nature, and, and that's what drew me into the image originally. But I do agree with Mandarin with the crop could have been improved. So that's why I kind of stuck it with that low silver. I was very happy with it in that area. So Gary would have to need to talk me up a little bit to get me in to see a distinction. Go on, Gary. Sure. Look, the, the picture is all about space. It's all about room. And it's all about this minor animal on its own in a really minimal landscape. It's meant to be empty with one little, one little tick in there. So have another look. So our average score is 79. Gary holds an 88. Everyone else can rescore. Print has become a silver, 82. Print, please. Kenyan lioness on the Masai Mara, frustrated with the incessant flies, tries desperately to shake them off. 2017. This print scores 79, but we have a challenge from Adam Finch on 84. Now, you're not alone because Hillary's on 81, and then you've got a 78, 77, and a 76 to work on. I, I actually, I, I love the expression of the lioness, and I love their the just definable prey in the background of the zebra. I really enjoy that connection between the two that the photographers brought us. Um, the flies and that eye, you can just experience the frustration um, in the animal there. And I, I thought the photographer bringing us, <coughs> bringing us a moment that may, I, I guess in, in some ways might not be perfect to other people, but actually gives a, a, a bit of humanity or a bit of, a bit of um, personality to the animal is, is great. So I'm on, on silver at 84. Mandarin, you are on 76. Um, yeah, it's it's um, a, a, a great moment um, captured there. With y you know, you can see the movement in the ear from flicking the the flies away. Um, I scored it professional practice, good professional practice. The reason why I didn't go higher um, was I w actually would have liked to have seen it cropped in tighter, so that I uh, the the focus to me was you know, the flies around the animal and I found that the um, the zebras in the background were actually distracting if the zebra on the left or the right had been closer to um, the feature animal um, rather than that little bumpy zebra that's in the middle. Um, I probably would have scored it a little higher so perhaps if the photographer could have come around a little bit um, which may not have been possible in this situation but I'm listening. Hillary, you're in the silver range at 81. Yes, I think this was worth a, a low, <coughs> excuse me, a low silver. Uh, the photographers obviously caught this moment really well, and that's not always possible because, um, and th the expression on the lioness's face. Well, it, that's probably fairly standard, but it's it's 
it's a fun sort of a thing. I I like the ad addition of the the prayer in the background. I'm not sure going in really tight into the head probably would be a, a totally different picture. And I, I can't sort of um, think. Yeah, I don't know that it helps my argument anyway, but um, I think it's worthy of a silver, but nothing more than just a silver. Adam, your right of reply. And that's what I'm, I was sort of looking for, is I, I, I feel it's worthy of a, of a, a nice um, a solid silver. I, I, I think the connection to the prey is important in this image to give it, give it more context rather than just being all about the, the flies. Um, yeah, have another look at it and, and uh, join me in silver. So this Prince Average score currently sits at 79. Adam has an 84 locked in. Everyone else can rescore. And this print becomes a silver at 82. Next print, please. A tiny Australian native silver eye migrates from Tasmania to east coast of Australia for a milder climate, rarely stationary whilst opportunistically feeding on small insects in flight. This print scores 86, a silver with distinction. Adam, can you have a chat to us about it, please? You're on 87. Yeah, gr great use of a restrained uh, colour palette, just for little hints through the uh, through the the, the um, um, paperback or uh, whatever tree it is. Um, uh, also, like to commend the author on the really great use of the matte space. It's quite quite unique, and um, you know, it's it's nice to see something different happening. Thanks, Adam. Uh, can you describe that, Matt, actually, for the people on live stream? Yeah, so we've actually got a... Uh, it's sort of centrally placed within the overall map, but to the left-hand side, so it kind of gives a direction to where the bird could could go. So quite interesting. And one more reason, if you are around in Melbourne, to come along and have a look at the prints on the walls, because you never know what you might find. Um, okay, let's do a judge change. Thank you, Hillary. You have been a machine. And we'll bring on David. One South Australian for another. We'll have the next print, please. Brolga family portrait. A family of Brolgas settle in for the night on their raised nest in the middle of a wetland. Just like humans, there's always one kid that won't look at the camera. This print scores 83 silver awards. With all judges in the silver range. Cam, can we have a word from you? Yeah, it's beautiful capture. Love the, um, just the placement of all the heads. Works so well. And the caption, just with the reference to the child not looking at the camera and made it, <laughs> really sealed it for me. Thanks, Cam. Next print, please. Male emperor penguins leave the main penguin colony on the frozen sea ice at remote Gould Bay in Antarctica to start the 10-mile walk to the open ocean in search of food for the chicks.
Sprint scores 84, silver award. And we'll also go for review at the end of this category to see if it goes up into the next range. May we have a comment, please, from David? Um, what I particularly like about this is the panoramic um, crop and also the leading penguin having a different um, body language to the others, I think, really makes the shot. Thank you very much. Next print, please. There is no caption for this image. This print scores 75. Gary, could you have a chat with us about this print? Yes, look, I went, I went looking for something, some interaction between these two animals and that story didn't come across. They're together. They exist together for a reason, but the reason is, isn't there. There, I there are also some post-production issues with some um, dodging as well that are really easy to pick up. So you've just got to be a little bit careful with that and perhaps try and come up with the moment of interaction between the two species. Yep. Awesome. Thank you, Gary. Next print, please. One month long single exposure documenting the transition of the sun and corresponding local cloud cover during exposure. Shot using a homemade camera using a modified alternative process within the Adelaide CBD. This print scores 88, a silver with distinction. But a challenge from Adam, thank you, on 92. You are not alone. David has hit the known button, but he's on 90. There's an 88, 86, and an 84. Take it away, Adam. The kind of interplay between these kind of stark graphic building shapes, but sort of... Um, sort of shards of modern humanity on the one side and we've sort of got what feels like a, a, a more um, green sort of organic sort of side and this kind of connection that the sun trails have made between the two and this wonderful kind of leading line of the, of the street or the, the, the car tracks for feels like sort of through the centre of the image really encapsulates this image. I just keep on flowing through it really, really well. This, there's a lot of pre-thought um, and beautiful sort of finish to this image that I'd like to reward the photographer for. I'm at gold at 92. Mandarin from 84. Um, absolutely beautiful image. Um, I agree with everything that's been said. Um, the reason why, and I've scored it a solid silver, and I, I'm definitely willing to um, go up. The reason why I didn't go higher um, is a, a couple of things. Um, there's a there's a, a couple of elements in the sky that I would have loved to have um, been addressed in the the title. Um, it's where I find titles really helpful with this category. Um, but the the beautiful it, it just takes me back to some of the um, sort of New York landscapes of Steichen back in the the day. It, it just has that that ethereal quality um, in the street that I really love. Um, so I am listening, David. Since you're in gold, we better hear from you on ninety. 
Yeah, uh, one thing I find it really extraordinary is that al although it's a really long exposure, some of those shapes on the, s on the what I can imagine is the street on the other side actually kind of look like people. And so it just brings this element of humanity to this, you know, technique as well. And that's what I'm really enjoying about this image. It actually looks like a streetscape with people walking along. And that's extraordinary because this, this is several months, you know. And I, I don't know if they're garbage bins or what. It doesn't matter because it what it's evo evoking is really quite incredible. So we'll just clarify this is a one-month exposure. Uh, Adam, you're right of reply. Yeah, I, I think it's the connection to humanity that this image gives you. You sort of got um, from the organic to the the industrial, but also underpinning all of that is the you know the ability to kind of give it g give it a more real sense of, of 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 a short moment within a long moment, and that and that I, I, why I'd sort of like to reward the uh, the author with a, a a gold for for presenting us with this image. So our current score is an 88. Adam has a 92, but everyone else can rescore. Thank you, judges. This print scores a 91, a gold award. Going to do a judge change. Thank you, Cameron. And bring on Joshua Holko. We'll have the next print, please. Deception Island on the Antarctic Peninsula left abandoned for over a century, the remnants of the whaling era consumed by volcanic activity. This print scores 83, silver award. David, could you give us a comment about this one, please? Uh, yeah, I really enjoy the kind of compressed perspective, which makes the background a little bit abstract, and I really quite like that, but I can't figure it out immediately. Um, and it I really enjoy that, so I want to look at it for a long time. Thanks. Well done. Next print, please. Sea turtles swimming through coral reef bombies. This print scores 87, a silver with distinction. But Mandarin is going to challenge it. Good on you. From gold, 90. What have we got? We've got two 88s, an 86, and an 83. Go for it. Okay, so we're nearly there with some of us. <laughs> one, of <m> one of us, I have a bit of work. Um, when this image turned around, the, the first thing that hit me was the composition. Um, it is perfectly composed. It's beautifully symmetrical. You've got the shafts of the sunlight coming down, leading the eye to that beautiful tortoise um, the uh, little animal in the background the other tortoise turtle um, is is an extra element that I, I really um, feel adds the story technically this has been printed absolutely superbly um, I would love to hear why people don't think it's worth a gold which I genuinely think it is Adam you were on 83 so solid silver 
Yeah, look, I, and I don't disagree with anything Mandarin has has mentioned. I, I enjoy the colour palette. I enjoy the um, little glimmers of fish that sort of on the edges of the the, um, the reef there. Um, I've been harsh on 83. I do need a little bit more um, work maybe to get me into the gold category, but certainly, um, certainly I'm listening to my fellow photographers about what their opinion. David, you were right next to the average. You're on 88. Uh, yeah, I'll be coming up, definitely. Um, I really quite like the timing as well. I mean, the, the turtle in between these two, um, you know, outcrops, right right in a point where th we're getting a really nice contrast between the colours. Um, the printing is superb. I also like the little white points in the um, waves at the top and the way that they balance um, with, the, with the turtle. And I'll be coming up to gold. Mandarin, you might have replied. Um, all great comments. Um, I, as I said, I think we're nearly there. Um, to me, this is like a, a Sunday stroll between a couple, these two um, animals just meandering through that gap in the, the reef. Um, all the little elements of the fish, the way that the reef has been printed are exquisite. Um, there's absolutely nothing to not love about this image and I would love to see this as a gold. Our average score is 87. Mandarin has a 90. Everyone else can rescore. Five judges at 90. We have a gold. Nice work, team. Thank you, Andrew, for stepping in there. Next print, please. Kalia Bird Migration, Botswana. This print is a gold at 90. You can certainly challenge that if you'd like. You going to? Okay, Adam's going to challenge from 93. He wants it to be a better gold. I assume. Who knows what he's going to tell us. Um, okay, you're not alone because Josh is also a 93. Gary's only a point away at 92. Then there's an 87 and an 83. Okay. Um... Yeah, I, I did. Uh, I think any gold needs to have a bit of a bit of chatting about it, and I'd certainly like to do so. Um, from from a distance, it's uh, I it's purely textural. You don't really get a great sense of what you're looking at, and the closer you get, you the more um, the more you start reading into it, and the more more personality um, the image gets. And then as you get really close, you actually start to read each individual animal and each individual personality. And um, but. What's interesting is almost every bird, if not every bird, has a singular focus and an, a singular kind of direction and, and drive. And that's in such an uh, a gr uh, enormous group of animals is, is quite unique to sort of capture it so well. Um, and purely to have the frame so filled with so many is, is really well done. Um, it's been beautifully printed. It's been printed to a, a great amount of sh size. Um, and there is also one with a cane if you look really closely. Um, this is, um, a, uh, for me, a gold at 93. I'd like to see it getting a little bit more than uh, that. Not, not that any gold at is just a gold, but we'd like to see it a little bit stronger. Thank you. Mandarin, you're at 83. Ten away from Adam. Um, I didn't quite hear what you said about there's a, a, a different... Did you say a different bird there? A different... 
that was a joke. It was like a w- where's Wally moment. Yeah, it's right. <laughs> yeah, right. Sorry, I was just, I was just uh, so intrigued looking at the image. I, I thought you said there was a different bird, <laughs> um, and it was. It's it's like a where's Wally. This image. Um, it's it's a, a quite extraordinary. I was looking for that extra element. Um, I scored it a solid silver, and I- it is a quite a, an intriguing image. The reason why I didn't go higher was I, d- I did want something to draw my attention because I wasn't sure where to look. Um, I found the, the background up the top left-hand corner actually a little distracting. Um, uh, the the w- background that's out of focus, it, it just drew my attention away from what I wanted to see in the image. Um, but I'm listening. I've got two down the end there that are... Looking at me, I'm trying to see which one of you desperately wants to speak. Maybe since you're both in gold, let's let's hear from both of you. I'll go to Gary first and then Josh. Yep, so <laughs> I went straight into 92, pretty much straight away. It's a fabulous example of repetition and confusion all at the same time. From the back of the room, it looks like a whole lot of grains of sand. It doesn't look like birds at all. Uh, and initially, you could, if you were half blind, you could you could think it was sand. Trying to um, trying to shoot these sorts of things is really difficult because the backgrounds often interfere with that mass flock, and this whole repetition but confusion idea of the mass flock has been really beautifully put together. So, and we y- Man- Mandarin, you talked about that bit of space. I think it needs that little bit of space up the top, just just to to talk about a little bit of background. But apart from that fabulous example of mass confusion and repetition all at the same time and joshua anything to add i'll just add that i think it's wonderful that the photographer has embraced the mess you know uh, they've, they've found order in chaos and that's extremely difficult to do i think it's been very well printed uh it's very very sharp where it needs to be just to address that top left hand corner look it's a little dark and that's the only reason i didn't go to gold with distinction on this one i think it's very, very strong, and I, I, I applaud the photographer for, for finding order in chaos. Yep. Adam, your right of reply. Yeah, look, I, I think we've all... The only, the only negative is we t- we've spoken about this corner and whether it needs to be there or not, and I, I, actu- I, I am of the belief that the photographer has left it there to give it some reality and a little bit and sort of give us a little tiny bit of grounding um, the duality of this image of further back s- looking like grains of sand and getting closer, getting the personalities of the individual animal animals with their their order and chaos all all in one. Um, this is really great communication and should be rewarded I- with a really solid gold. I'm at 93. Our average score is 90. Adam is asking for a 93. Everyone else can rescore. Print scores 92. Good, solid gold. And for the local audience here, all the prints are displayed on the walls outside, all those that win awards 80 or higher. So go and have a good close look at them. Next print, please. During the day, Big Eye Snappers rest and find safety by schooling together. But as dusk falls, they begin to break formation as they swim off to their feeding ground to begin a night of hunting. This print scores 83, silver award. Josh, you were on the average. Could you give us a word about this one? I love the composition of this. I love the depth to the photograph. I love the way I get the feeling of motion from the fish going around this balmy reef. And I love the colour palette that's in the uh, in the soft blues and greens and aquas. So I think it's uh, it's, it's, it's scored uh, silver, solid silver. It's and silver, it's yeah. 83. And I think it's, uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful example of, of, uh, of where a print should sit of that quality. Awesome, thank you. Next print, please. Where two worlds meet, above and below the sea.
This print scores 84 silver award. Uh, might go to Gary. Can we have a word from you, please? Yeah, really interesting picture. It's just very simple picture of the habitat, but it's <coughs> it almost had a three-dimensional feel to it because of that over-under look. And I, I, I kept turning my head like a Labrador trying to work out what I was looking at. So, yeah, well done, photographer. Yeah, silver award. Yeah. Thanks, Gary. Next print, please. Sagittarius sunflowers. These three star-forming nurseries are 5,000 light years distant. Glowing hydrogen gas creates the dominant orange colour with ionised oxygen and sulphur present in various colours separated by dark interstellar dust. Colour mapping inspired by Van Gogh's famous sunflowers painting. 20 hours exposures, 20 hours exposure through three separate narrowband filters. By majority, this print is a gold at 90. Yes. How do you think about that one? Yes, Mandarin's going to challenge. We had a majority score of 90. Even though Mandarin is on 90, she's going to challenge because our average score was 89. So you've got three on 90, an 88 and an 85. Yeah, I mean, we can challenge when we're on 90 and I think a, a, a couple of extra points would be wonderful for this. Yeah. Um, because when I listened to the title of this image, I mean, besides looking at it and thinking it's I extraordinary, it's so beautiful to look at, you, your eye meanders around the, the colour palette. Um, but the fact that the author actually referenced Van Gogh to give that, you know, sunflower, all the, the rich colours, takes it to another level for me. And I'm almost thinking, is this gold distinction, perhaps? Um, so I'd love to hear some more. Adam, you were edging into silver distinction at 85. Yeah, look, I, I enjoy the, the, um, the, the thought that the author has brought here and the, the using the technique to, to bring something extra um, through the use of, um, you know, kind of uh, colour ass uh, assigning. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm comfortable with my fellow judges in gold. I'm probably a little bit uncomfortable in that myself, but um, I'm listening. I think, you know, gold distinction is a, is a, is a, different, um, a different kettle of fish in, in a lot of ways. I'd, I sort of want to see uh, uh, something th that's that's taken me somewhere I haven't been before to get into that kind of category. And I, I kind of, I have been, I haven't been here, obviously, I'm not a time traveller, but, um, but I, I, I have seen uh, I images like this, although this is, an, is, a, is a pristine example of that, and I think it's reflected in the current score. Josh, you were on 90 as well with Mandarin. I was very comfortable going straight to gold on this photograph. I didn't get anything from the Van Gogh reference, to be honest. It didn't, I don't find a translation in the colour palette. I know his work and I, and I don't find it in this image, but it didn't detract from me. What did push me up into gold here was this very strong visual feeling that this almost is pointing, this shape is pointing almost to this, to this stellar nebula on the right. And I think that graphical nature uh, has great depth into it. And that for me was enough to go into gold uh, without the description. Uh, and since you were also in gold, David, let's have a word from you on 90 as well. Yeah, I'm just continually amazed at how much this type of photography, astrophotography, the bar just keeps being raised. And I think that it was mentioned that this is a pristine example and I think this is probably the best example I've seen to date. So I think we should reward it. Mandarin, your right of reply. 
Um, I just want to read out um, the definition of goal with distinction. It's exceptional vision, creativity, innovation and technique. Exhibits excellence in all assessment criteria, um, which I believe this image actually does, all of those. Um, beyond the, the, the reference to Van Gogh, if I, if I go with that further, the longer I look at it, I actually see that that bottom highlight is almost like a vase and the stems going up so I can genuinely see um, the flowers so to me it takes it for me it takes it to that next level of exceptional um, creativity with within something that is actually they're there um, but they the author has taken it beyond so I'd love to see a goal distinction our majority score is 90, though we have an average of 89. We hold the majority 90. Mandarin is locked in at 90, but everyone else may rescore. I will also let you know, judges, Mandarin has pressed the known button. Print scores 93, a good solid gold. <coughs> and we'll be hanging on the walls outside for anyone who wants to have a close look, along with all our other awarded prints. Let's have the next print, please. Pinjalo Snapper congregate in schools around open ocean coral reefs. They swim in synchronised formations which constantly change shape. It seems as though they swarm like a flock of birds reacting to the leaders who make a decision on their direction. Triton Bay, Indonesia. This print scores 82, silver award. And Gary, you're on the average. Yeah, just a great example of <laughs> schooling fish doing their curvy, swirly thing. Lovely colour palette too. And, and the, the subtle differences between the two, the two tones. Fantastic. So very simple picture. 82. Yep. Thank you. Time for another judge change. Thank you, Adam Finch. And welcome back, Andrew Campbell. Let's have the next print, please. An Australian black tip shark cruises above an aggregation of rays. This print scores 87, a silver with distinction. But Josh is going to challenge because he's on gold at 90. Andrew is only one point away on 89. Then there's an 88, 84 and an 83. Okay, well, we're not all that far away. So let's have a quick chat about it. First of all, I think the, the colour palette that the photographer has presented us with is absolutely superb. It's this muted, limited colour palette, but it beautifully conveys the feeling and texture of, of being underwater. I love the abstract nature of the rays that are lying on the bottom, partially submerged in sand, and the very straight tails. I didn't realize what I was looking at straight away when I went up to the print. I had to look very closely to realize there's a whole bunch of rays there, and it's hard to make them out, but they start to look even like bits of the coral. And with the reef shark swimming into the frame, uh, it just adds that extra element that really brings the image uh, to life for me. I think it's a wonderful example of underwater work. Uh, and I, I applaud the photographer, and I'd like you to all to please have another look at it and see if you see what I see. You see that beautiful abstract nature that's there with those rays. Uh, and the print quality, I think, has uh, been very delicately handled. The tonality is wonderful, and we should, um, we should reward it accordingly. 
David, you were in a silver on 83. Um, yeah, I was, I was harsh. I, I'm going to uh, rethink my score. Um, I'm not look, I'm not sure it's a gold, but I think um, I, I do enjoy the composition and the um, the way that the, the shark, the sleek torpedo shape of the shark is definitely stands out against the sort of randomness of the rays. Um, so I'll be coming up. Yes, please, Andrew, on 89. Sorry, had to. Um, pareidolia, the mind's desire to find shapes and things within abstract forms. Um, this has it in spades. It could be an x-ray. It could be a security scan at the airport. But it's an underwater photograph of this bunch of, sorry, aggregation of rays, did you say? An aggregation of rays. It's a new one. <laughs> it's fabulous. And I was a gutless coward at 89, so I'm going up. Josh, your right of reply. I, I think it's all been said. I'll just, I'll just say the last thing we perhaps should think about before we rescore this print is rewarding the vision of the photographer to see the scene clearly before they press the shutter and not to uh, you know, fall into the temptation of, of cropping in very tightly just to find the shark because the shark is obviously the primary subject. <coughs> pardon me, the primary subject. But the photographer stepped back from that and said, and showed us the the animal in the environment, and then used the abstract nature of the rays to help frame it. So, let's uh, let's take it up there where it needs to be, please. Our average score is eighty-seven. Josh has a ninety. Everyone else can rescore. Gold award at 90. <laughs> Lovely work, judges. Thank you. Next print, please. Shot while free diving in Queensland as part of a research effort is a fully grown gestating female eagle ray measuring in excess of six metres nose to tail, strangely observed circling a bait ball of Tavelli not a co documented food source or notable companion of interest. This print scores 81, silver award. Uh, can we hear from David on this one, please? Um, yeah, look, I, I really enjoy the, the simplicity of the image. Um, I think it could have even gone higher if the print had been a little um, better, it's particularly in the, the fish that were talked about in the back. And if they're talked about in the caption, I would like to see them a little more clearly. Thank you, David. We'll have the next print, please. Next print, please. A young humpback whale slides past for a closer look. Print scores 80, silver award. A comment, please, Josh. It's not often you see a whale photograph with eye contact, uh, which I very much enjoyed when I went up to this print. Uh, and that gave me uh, a, a more emotional feeling about the, about the subject than I perhaps would have had if it had been taken further away. So congratulations to the photographer. Thank you very much for that. And can we have a blank screen, please? Because that's the end of this category. Woohoo!
Thank you so much, judges. You've been absolutely amazing. Don't go far because we're about to go into reviews, but Gary Kranich, you are excused. You are required elsewhere. Uh, in just one moment, I'm going to be changing you guys around a little bit. Okay, so we are about to review the prints in this category that were sitting on the cusp um, of the next category. So our judges are just asked yes or no, should this print go to the next award range? I'll let you know which one it's currently sitting in and let you know, uh, will it go up? Yes, no is a no, it will remain where it is. Our judges are Andrew Campbell, Adam Finch, Hilary Hahn, Ollie Dale and David Evans. Thank you guys. Let's have the first print, please. Now, I'll just let you know the captions of all of these as well. While heavy rains soak a parched land, cloud to ground lightning reaches out like fingers across the sky to locate the point where the electricity will discharge from the ominous skies. Multiple flashes with strong winds during the exposure has the windmill being captured in different positions. This is currently a silver award. Does it remain as a silver award or become a silver with distinction? Yes, for silver distinction, yes. Yes, I will be careful with that, thank you. Does it go up? Next print, please. Flamingos, Marismas, Guadalquivir, Spain. This is a silver. Does it go up to a silver distinction? Yes, it does. Next print, please. A polar bear near, S near Svalbard shares its kill with a latecomer. The bear is listed as vulnerable. The ivory gull standing nearby has near threatened status, while the passing glacis gull is not threatened. The seal is unidentified. This is a silver. Does it go up to a silver with distinction? No, it remains a silver. Next print, please. A huntsman spider, family Spiricidae, according to the Australian Museum arachnologist who could not identify it further. It was found along a track off the State Mine Road near Lithgow in January 2017. Captured using flash and a reflector that also served as windbreak. This is a silver. Does it go up to a silver with distinction? Yes, it does. Next print, please. 
Like a pencil sketch in the winter landscape, a wild reindeer displays its claim for a small patch of frozen tundra ground in the rough search for food during the frozen winter months in Svalbard. This is a silver. Does it go up to silver distinction? Yes, it does. Next print, please. The incoming current carries plankton, which lures the planktivores out to feed at the reef's leading edge. The faster a fish can retreat from predators, the further out it will swim from the reef's protection. The orange antheas feed close, while the faster swimming fusilias dare to feed further out. This is currently 79. Does it become a silver? Yes, it becomes a silver award. Next print, please. Yes, applaud. Two humpback whales sleep on the seabed during the winter breeding season in the waters of the Kingdom of Tonga. This is currently a silver with distinction. Does it become a gold? No, it remains a silver distinction at 89. Next print, please. Documented in the floodplains of Bamaroo, Northern Territory, Australia, the magpie goose gosling was snatched in an air-to-water attack by the apex predator in these wetlands, the whistling kite. The kite then used the fence post to beat and strip its meal in preparation for sustenance. This is 79. Does it become a silver? It remains at 79. Next print, please. Underwater macro photograph of a tiny predatory fish, the blue-striped flangblenny. His striking colours and comical appearance are at odds with his sharp teeth and flesh-eating habit. He hides safely in a discarded wormhole, waiting to ambush and bite a chunk out of any passing prey. This is 79. Does it become a silver? Yes, it becomes a silver. <laughs> Next print, please. Five-month-long ex single exposure documenting the transition of the sun and corresponding local cloud cover during exposure. Shot using a homemade camera using a modified alternative process within the Adelaide CBD. This currently holds 89. Does it become a gold award? And it does. It is a gold award. Next print, please. Australian fur seal. Arctophallus pusillus doriferus. I'm sorry, that's wrong. The world's fourth rarest seal species, playfully showing off at Murno Bight, Tasmanian, Tasman Peninsula, Tasmania. This is 79. Does it become a silver? No, it remains at 79. Next print, please. Male emperor penguins leave the main penguin colony on the frozen sea ice at remote Gould Bay in Antarctica to start the 10-mile walk to the open ocean in search of food for the chicks. This sits at 84. Does it become a silver with distinction? Yes, it does. Next print, please. Where two worlds meet, above and below the sea. This is currently 84, a silver. Does it become a silver with distinction? It remains at silver. Thank you, judges. That is the end of our reviews for this category. Thank you so much to all of you. Thank you to Terry Hahn, who has been my right hand here. He's been fabulous to work with. Thank you to Lissy for sponsoring this category. The trade show is buzzing at the moment, guys. Please be sure to go out and have a look. And we will um, finish up this room. They may be making some changes later on, so keep tuned uh, to see if anything is going to happen. Thanks very much, guys. Ha, ha, ha.